Hi, I'm here with Andrew Loescher. He's, uh, ultra, he's an automation specialist at Ultra Tool and Manufacturing. So first off, congrats on being a Supernova Award finalist. Um, let's just start at a high level. What does Ultra Tool and Manufacturing specialize in? Sure. Ultra Tool and Manufacturing specializes in on-time, uh, high-quality metal um, stampings, sheet metal stampings. Uh, we also build uh, high-quality tools for the stamping industry. Uh, as well as we provide um, a full fabrication department uh, for customers who are looking for smaller runs of sheet metal goods. We also have a value added department that can add nuts, bolts, um, weld um, parts of uh, the sheet metal parts that we stamp. And how large is the company? Uh, so we're about right around 100 employees um we're right around 28 million dollars in sales per year okay so um i know you were trying to you know scale things up and um you know what what were your challenges in doing that and just sort of getting the data you needed to optimize we really started the journey about four years ago now um so what kicked off the journey was really just uh hearing a lot of the talk about iiot uh, right away, we um, had some conversations with a company um, at the time uh, called Cores Engineering. Um, they were bought by Plex, and uh, Plex was bought by Rockwell. Um, but so they provided um, a solution for us. But really, even before they provided a solution for us, they helped us really figure out um, how we could benefit from um, smart technology, um, plant monitoring on the floor. As I talked with um, representatives um, from, at the time, Cores Engineering about what, you know, plant monitoring in general can do for you, uh, one of the most powerful things um, that they had said at the time was really, it can do anything for you. It just takes a team of people who um, have eyes on the floor, who can see what the problems are, the inefficiencies are. Um, and once you really have that kind of mindset, um, looking for those inefficiencies, um, there's there's always a tool, there's always a smart tool um, or some logic you can build behind the scenes to improve those inefficiencies and save money. So, did you have any infrastructure in place to you know measure um, these processes and manufacturing in, in place to begin with, or is that so, something that you worked with Plex to kind of just integrate? Some of our machines are fairly smart, um, at least the, the stamping presses, they have mountains of data um, that you could pull from them. They all are driven by um, industrial computers, PLCs, um, and we had Plex's ERP ahead of time. So we kind of had these two pieces. We had the ERP was working behind the scenes and we had our machines, but we didn't really have anything tying them together. So really the first time I personally uh, looked into one of our stamping presses to figure out what data we could pull from it. I was I was pretty surprised um, and very excited, um, to be honest, about what uh, we could get from that machine and um, feed into our ERP system or just create a dashboard for our own visibility. Um, so uh, Plex really provided um, that, that intermediate um, piece to connect our machines to our ERP system. And that, that connection was mostly a software layer? Um, yeah, mostly a software layer. I, really all we had to add um, was switches in any of our older machines that didn't have them. Um, and we standardized right away how we were going to communicate. So we had stamping presses that didn't even have a PLC um, that were just built off of relays all the way up to um, a new uh, new servo stamping press that has you know way more technology than than we'd ever look at or, or need to deal with. The presses kind of come with a, a, a monitoring system that we just upgraded those across all of our presses. So um, it's a really seamless implementation because we just really needed to upgrade those boards on each press and then connect an Ethernet cable and you're good to go. So how has this changed your processes and, and how you go about um, optimizing? The biggest change for us was, again, just getting into a mindset of 
what were our processes that were inefficient, first of all, um, and prioritizing which ones we felt we could make more efficient with this, um, with this technology, and then getting people on board um, and trained to deal with that. So right, the first step um, in the process was just getting our key players, managers, supervisors, um, together in a room and just kind of having a, a roundtable discussion on what everybody's problems are, um, what if, what inefficiencies were there, specifically right away related to um, monitoring and recording production on the plant floor and interfacing with Plex. Um, so we were trying to take away anything that an operator had to do um, specifically in Plex um, manually so that they could focus on um, making parts really just took away some processes, to be honest, um, like recording production, scrapping uh, parts in the system, and printing labels. Have you been able to um, tweak the processes from your learnings initially? Uh, I guess, how often do you go and, and kind of tweak how things are done? I would say from an implementation standpoint, um, the Plex engineers that um, take on the implementation are, are very hands-on, uh, very thorough, um, also very capable and interested in um, training um, people within our company um, to tweak uh, background logic and parts of the, the automated processes. Um, especially with our, some of our machines did require fairly custom logic. Um, so, um, what used to be called Mach uh, 2 and now Plex um, Automation and Orchestration has a pretty uh, um, pretty good set of templates, um, logic templates and, and things that they've built out to work for customers. Uh, but with some of our machines, there was quite a bit of custom, uh, custom building behind the scenes. Uh, their engineers helped out with, but I kind of picked up the ball um, and was able to learn how to build that logic behind the scenes which was really helpful for us and I know has been for other companies um, that I've spoken with um, so that, you know, even little things here and there um, that come up, they're able to uh, build additional logic or tweak logic or use um, some kind of history of transactions to make uh, make the processes even better. What um what have the returns been like? What, what, what have been some of the benefits you've been able to quantify? Yeah, so right away, um, the ROI for me was really just in recording production and printing labels. So just on our stamping floor alone, we have 13 stamping presses. Uh, 10, of the, 10 of them are automatic. Um, and some of those, uh, some of the pre some of the jobs that we run, um, I mean, we're making parts anywhere from really 20 up to 200 strokes per minute, parts per minute. Um, so we have some people that are making you know, hundreds and hundreds of boxes every day. So for that person to have to walk up to their computer and type in how many parts they've made, and then, you know, click through a couple of screens in Plex, which, you know, Plex is great, but it's still all extra work. So they're trying to record production, print a label, apply a label. Um, and I would say probably in at least a third of our jobs, um, they're stopping the machine to have to do all of that. So now um, all of that is done, recording production, uh, print, uh, recording scrap, printing labels, all that's done automatically. So an operator just can walk over quick, pull a label off, slap it on a box. Um, so the return on investment um, on that process alone paid for, um, paid for the Mach 2 product, the Plex a and product for us. Uh, just in one year's time, if we have all of our machines running um, on our shifts, and again, it kind of depends on the job if it's if it's one where the press is stopping or not. Um, so we're really saving money. Uh, we were seeing returns upwards of forty eight thousand dollars a year just on label printing itself and re and uh, production recording. Um, now we're also planning on um, building uh, building a lot, quite a few other initiatives out. Um, we have some pretty good ROI numbers for um, some additional logic that we built in house um, to. Track, um, track setup time for machines. So if an operator is struggling with a setup, previously we didn't really have very good uh, real-time visibility into that to um, have a supervisor go out and assist. Um, so something maybe turned into a five-hour setup on a machine, maybe a complex setup. 
uh, where now we can track what's going on there uh, via machine statuses and send out the correct people to assist the operators um, so they can get a machine up and running faster. Um, so we saw really good ROI uh, numbers on that as well um, and uh, decreased setup times because of that. So the, how long will this scale out uh, take? We've had the product for um, about two and a half years now. We've just done stamping. Um, the the build out wasn't, it was probably over a couple months. So our um, the way we did it was let's roll this out on two machines um, to start out with. So we just get our feet, our feet going and we get people seeing how it's working. Um, because once you kind of build out the one or two machines, especially with us in our stamping facility, our presses are mostly the same. Um, so we were able to build out just really two, two machine templates that we could then apply to the rest of our presses. So um, after we had those two kind of done and taken care of and running well, um, an implementation for another one was less than a day. It's really just um, applying that template to another work center, um, testing it out for an hour or two, and then just kind of letting it rip. We do have, um, like I said, we have our uh, a full fledged fabrication department and a value added department with uh, spot welders, welders, press brakes, whole bunch of different machines um, that we also plan on implementing at. Some of those implementations will be simpler. Um, for example, our spot welding machines, uh, we plan on also recording production and that's kind of already something we've done. So applying that to another work center is just a matter of really getting one piece of data from the machine. Hey, am I stroking up and down? Um, but in addition to that, we have, we have um, other initiatives that we are going to get going. Uh, we plan on building a dashboard to track um, cycles on all of our spot welders so that we know how many times a consumable, um, uh, like an electrode on a spot welder, how many hits it's, uh, how many strokes it's made because they wear out. So um, that can be a problem if we have, um, if we're not changing those in a certain time frame, then you might start getting bad parts. So now we can have a dashboard with real time visibility into how many, how many, um, how many strokes a machine has made so that we can, uh, be proactive and change machine consumables when we need to. All right. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Larry.